Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you're doing well. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a paracord dog leash using the herringbone braid. The herringbone braid is one of the most commonly used techniques for making dog leashes. This design is one that I've experimented with for a while and I think it works quite well. With this said, let me show you the parts of the dog leash, then let's make our own. Here I have an example of a dog leash that we're going to be making today. Let me show you the parts. At the very bottom, we have a snap hook. Through the top, of the snap hook, I fed four strands and folded them in half. This way I got eight strands to work with. I then tied a transitional knot, in my case a Matthew Walker knot. Then I transitioned into the herringbone braid. Then I braided a length up to the handle. At the handle I switched to a flat braid which is a lot more comfortable on the hands. In this case, this is the 8-stranded crocodile ridge braid. I braided the handle and then spliced in the 8 strands back into the herringbone braid and finished off using an 8-stranded herringbone knot. On the other side of the leash, I used 4 additional strands to tie another multi-strand herringbone knot. And with this, the leash was complete. Now, none of these techniques are set in stone. You can switch them around, perhaps do a gaucho style, perhaps do a different flat braid, different finishing knots, you really can play around. This is an example which I think will serve well and enable you to build out of this project. Let's take a look at the supplies needed to make such a dog leash. As far as supplies go, the first thing that we're going to need is going to be a mechanism with which we're going to attach our leash onto the dog collar. Now in my case, I'm going to be using a carabiner, but on my previous leash, I used a snap hook. They both work just fine and you can usually find these in various hardware stores. To make most of our leash, we're going to need 4 strands of paracord. This is type 3 paracord and for a 3 foot leash, you're going to need about 16 feet of each of the strands. So, 16 feet per strand. A longer leash is naturally going to require even longer strands. For the decorative part, right at the start of our leash, so this multi-strand Turk's head knot, we're going to need 4 additional strands. Each of these strands is about 3 feet long. For the tools, the first thing that you're going to need is going to be a lacing needle. This one is not absolutely required, but I definitely recommend it. You're also going to need something to cut the cords with, and a lighter to melt the ends once you have cut them. After gathering the supplies, let's begin making our leash. First off, we're going to take our four long pieces of paracord, each is about 16 feet long. I'm going to take my carabiner, 
you can also use a snap hook and I'm going to feed my four strands through. After passing your four strands through the carabiner, we have eight strands to work with. Four on the left, four on the right. Now you can arrange these in a variety of color combinations. You can do two of one color, then two of the other. You can mix it up, and this is going to give you different patterns. Now at this point, also make sure that the strands on both sides are of equal length. So half of the cord is on the left, half on the right. Now, you can skip into the herringbone braid immediately, or you can do some sort of a transitional knot. I'm going to show you two knots that you can easily use to transition into the knots and then into the braid. So I now have eight strands. Four at the front of the carabiner and four at the back. I'm going to take my first strand, so the front and the back part, and arrange them like this. So first we have the front part, then the back part. Then the second strand, again, front part, back part. Then the third strand, front part, the back part. And the last strand, front part, back part. Then I'm going to grab all of my strands like this and hold them firmly. I'm going to take the first strand, make a loop like this and pass over the other strands. Then I'm going to go around and under and through the loop. Then take the second strand, pass through the first loop, over the top, around, under and through the second loop. Then the third strand passes through the first two loops, over the other strands, behind, under and through the third loop. And while doing this, I make sure that these strands here are lined up. So this is the first strand, second strand, third strand, and so on. Take the next strand, pass under and through your first three loops, over the other strands, into the fourth loop. And again, the fourth strand is on top of the third one and so on. Continue with the rest of your strands.
and the last strand again passes through your previous loops and under and through the last loop that we made. Like this. So we now tied our Matthew Walker knot. We are now going to tighten it up and adjust it a little bit. Tightening is done this way. You make sure that your first strand is here at the bottom. Then you slightly tighten it up. Then you make sure that the second strand is at the second position, so just above the first strand, then you tighten it up a little bit. Then the third strand should be on top of the second strand. Tighten up a little bit. Then the fourth strand. Tighten up a little bit. Then the fifth strand is this one. And it should be at the fifth position. Tighten it up a little bit. Then the sixth one. At the sixth position. Tighten up a little bit. The seventh one. And finally the last one, the eighth strand. So this way we have our strands neatly lined up like this. Repeat the process of tightening our first strand a little bit, the second strand, third strand, fourth strand, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. And you can do this several times. Usually I do it until I can't tighten up like this anymore. So this should be good. My strands are still lined up and I'm now going to pick up this strand, which is the first one that we used at the very bottom and I'm going to move it alongside this strand. So I pick it up and I move it. Then I do the same with the second strand, the same with the third strand and then finally with the fourth strand like this so i moved my first four strands closer to my eighth strand first one second one third one fourth one now very slowly continue tightening up And just rotate your strands, tightening the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one. Sixth one, seventh one, eighth one. Square up your knot once in a while and continue tightening. This is a very gradual process and one that you need to pay attention to. Now let's say that this is enough tightening for now. As you can see, the knot looks quite nice here and a bit distorted here. So what do we need to fix? Well, the strands in a properly dressed Matthew Walker knot need to go from one side to the other of the knot 
without tucking under the neighboring strands like this. So here I'm going to take a thread. You can use any other type of a tool, whatever you have. Pull this strand, tucking under, out a little bit, then tighten it up. And continue searching for strands that tuck under the neighboring strands. Pull them out and continue tightening. This process usually doesn't take too long, but it depends on how distorted your knot is. It's not your fault, it is just something that you need to do with every Matthew Walker knot. So keep working on your knot until all of the strands are going to be like this. Traveling from one side of the knot to the other without tucking under. Now at some point the knot is going to give in and you're going to get a nice looking knot. This one fought me quite a while until I was able to shape it up. After you have shaped up the knot, it is time to pull in these strands into the knot and then into the working hands. This is very simple. You start on the left side, pulling one of the strands in, then out. You pick up another end, you pull in that strand and out the other end. We need to do this with all four strands, so just keep it up. Find the next strand that you would like to pull in and pull it in and out. So something like this. You can still improve this, but it looks much better now. Besides the Matthew Walker beginning, you can also do this one. This one is a lot easier to do, and in many cases it is more appropriate. For example, when your piece of hardware, in this case the carabiner, is too narrow to neatly line up four strands like this, then this way is better. It is narrower since it uses the four stranded round braid, which then transitions into the foot rope knot. This way is a lot easier, so I definitely recommend using this one if you can't get this one to work. This second way of attaching our carabiner is started a bit differently. Let's assume that this is the middle point of our four strands. I'm going to move up a couple of inches. Then I'm going to secure my strands using a clip. Then I'm going to do my four stranded round braid. The round braid is started by placing two strands to the right side and two to the left. Then, using my top right strand, I go behind, in between the two strands on the left, 
then over and back to the right side. Then take your top left strand, go behind, in between the two strands on the right, over the top, and to the bottom on the left. Then the top right again, behind, in between the two strands on the left, over the top, and to the bottom on the right. Then the top left again, behind, in between the two strands on the right side, then over the top, and to the bottom on the left. And just keep doing this for a little while. After braiding a short length, we're going to attach our carabiner like this, remove our clip and make sure our colors of strands stay together. So these two, these two, these two and these two. I'm going to bring them together. It doesn't matter how you line them up, just as long as you have them in pairs. I'm now going to tie a crown knot, then upgrade it to a foot rope knot. So take one of the pairs, place it counterclockwise over the next pair, then the next pair goes counterclockwise over the third pair of strands, then the third pair of strands passes over the last of the pairs, so over the fourth pair, and the last pair is going to travel under the first pair that we made. And if you did this correctly, when you tighten up, What you should get is this square shape. So this is the crown knot. All we did was pass counterclockwise with one pair over the next and with the last one we went under the first pair. So this is the crown knot. Now pick up one of the pairs, travel under the next pair, like this, then immediately under and through the center of the crown knot, like this. Take the next pair, again, travel under the next pair of strands and immediately up through the center of the crown knot.
and then the third pair passes under the last pair of strands and immediately up through the center of the crown knot. And the last pair passes under the first pair that we used here, which has already been used up, and immediately up and through the center of the crown knot. We have tied our foot rope knot. Now to tighten it up, all we do is pick up one set of strands and pull on them. Pick up the second set and pull. The third set and pull. And what you should get at some point is a nice looking knot which resembles a Turk's head knot. Now, if you have any of these loose strands here, pull them in, into the knot, and work them out, out of the working ends. So after you have adjusted this knot and the loop, this is what you should get. A fairly nice looking foot rope knot with the four stranded braid acting as a loop. So this is another way of starting this leash. Neither is better, this one is easier. This one is a bit more nice looking. It is all a matter of preference. We have finally attached our piece of hardware onto our cords. Here you can see yet another variation of attachment using the four stranded braid, then transitioning into the Matthew Walker knot. There is so much to choose from, as far as attachment methods go, that it is hard to cover them all. But after you have done this, what we're going to do is take our carabiner and attach it, for example, onto some sort of a loop. Usually, I'm going to hook this piece of paracord onto a doorknob. This is so that I am able to pull onto my carabiner in order to create some tension in my braid. To begin the braid, the first thing that we're going to do is establish a color sequence. So for example, you can have all four strands of the same color on one side and all four on the other. You could, alternatively, do it like this, having two strands of one color, then two strands of the other, and then again on the other side, two strands of one color, and then two strands of the other. The color sequence of your strands is going to determine the pattern of your braid. 
The braid is done exactly the same way, as far as the technique goes, but the color sequence is going to determine the pattern. With this said, let's start braiding the 8-stranded herringbone braid. We start on the right side, taking our top right strand, passing under and around, going under the top two strands on the left, then over the next two strands, and back to the bottom on the right side. Take the top left strand, pass behind, under the top two strands, over the next two strands at the bottom on the right side, then back to the bottom on the left side. Continue with the top right strand again, behind, under two, over two on the left, and back to the bottom on the right side. Then again, top left strand, behind, under, these two strands on the top right, over the other two strands on the bottom right, and back to the bottom on the left side. And again, top right, behind, under to over to, to the bottom right side. Top left, behind, under to over to on the right side, and back to the bottom on the left side. Again, top right, behind, under to over to, and back to the bottom on the right side. Then again, top left, behind, under to over to on the right side, then back to the bottom on the left. Now after you go over all 8 strands like I did here, we're going to tighten up our braid slightly. So you just pull on each of the strands a little bit. Just to get everything consistent. After this, we continue exactly the same way. Starting with the top right strand, then the top left, top right, top left, Top right, top left, top right, top left. Like this. Then again, tighten up. Like this. Now, if you're doing the same length for a leash like I am, then you're going to be braiding a bit under two and a half feet of the herringbone braid. So the length 
for our herringbone braid is going to be a bit under two and a half feet. You can do the length needed for the leash in one sitting. But if you want to take a break during your braiding process, I recommend taking a clip and clipping the strands on one side of the braid. This is going to help you prevent you from losing track and well, having a lot of work fixing it up. Now that I have braided about 2 feet and 4 inches of the herringbone braid, I'm going to start the handle. The handle can be made by simply continuing the herringbone braid, or you can choose some sort of a flat braid. Flat braids are a lot more comfortable to use, since they distribute the force of the pull a lot better on your hands. So I recommend the flat braid if possible, but well, you're going to need to learn how to do this. You can continue with the herringbone braid which you already know. The flat braid that I'm going to be using for the handle is the 8 strand crocodile ridge braid. It is done by again splitting off our strands four to each side. I take the top right one, I travel under over, then under these two bottom strands. So the bottom right one and the bottom left one. Then back to the bottom on the right side. Like this. Then you simply repeat the process on the left side. So you take the top strand. Under over. Then under the bottom two strands, so the bottom left, bottom right, then back to the bottom on the left side, like this. And again, top right strand, under, over, and under the two bottom strands. Then back to the bottom on the right side. And again, top left strand, under, over, under the two bottom strands, and back to the bottom on the left side. And again, top right strand. Under, over, under the two bottom strands, and back to the bottom on the right side. Top left, under, over, under the two bottom strands, and back to the bottom on the left. And again, top right strand. Under, over, under the two bottom strands, then back to the bottom on the right. Then the top left, under, over, under the two bottom strands, and back to the bottom on the left. Now you will want to tighten up your braid while you're doing it, by pulling on each of the strands. So just like in the herringbone braid, you will want to tighten up your braid after you have cycled through all 8 strands. After tightening up, simply continue.
After cycling through all of your strands, again tighten them up. Like this. You will want to do a handle about a foot and four inches long. That's more than plenty. After braiding a sufficient length for my handle, I'm going to bring the end of my braid to the beginning of my flat braid, like this. And by doing this, I basically made the handle for my leash. Now we need to secure the handle and we're going to do this by taking our eight strands and working them back into the herringbone braid. To do this, a lacing needle is very handy. I'm going to pick out one of the strands in my flat braid, attach my lacing needle, then I'm going to follow one of the strands in my herringbone braid. For example here, I picked out this one. So I'm going to travel alongside it and where it travels under 2, I'm also going to travel under 2. So something like this. Now you don't have to be terribly careful about doing this in a nice looking way. This splice which we're going to make, we're going to cover with a covering knot. So the look of the splice is not important. It is important that you work in your ends at least an inch to two inches into the braid in order to secure them. So just continue with the same strand tucking under two for a few more times. So let's say that this is enough. Remove your lacing needle. Pick out another strand. Attach your lacing needle. Then again pick out one of the strands in the herringbone braid which you're going to follow. So in this case, I'm going to be following this one. I start under two, then again under two, Like this. And this is two strands already completed. One additional tip that I would like to offer is that you will want to splice in your strands to about the same location in your herringbone braid. This is going to make the covering knot a lot more consistent when you tie it. 
I have now spliced in all ends back into the herringbone braid. Each end follows one strand in the braid. You can see that I did not do a particularly nice looking job. This is because it doesn't matter. What we're going to do now is cover it up using a decorative knot. So this is the knot that we're going to tie. Basically, it is a herringbone, just like the herringbone braid, so it fits in nicely. So here on the right side, I have the handle of the leash. On the left, I have my herringbone braid. I'm going to pick up four strands of the same color and line them up without the strands crossing each other, so they go parallel. I'm now going to wrap around, around the spliced part three times. So this is once, twice, three times. At this point, we have 12 strands running around our leash. On the bottom right, we have our four working hands. We're now going to use the four strands in order to weave through the 12 strands that we set up. The sequence is always going to be under one, over one, under one, over one, and so on, until we go through all of the strands. So we're always going to do six unders and six overs. So we take the first strand out of the four, and we use it to go under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, and finally over here on the left. We did six overs and six unders. We continue with the second strand, doing the exact same sequence, but we're going to start it under the previous strand that we used. So this was the first strand, and with my second strand, I'm going to start my sequence going under one, under the first strand that I used, then simply continue the same sequence. Over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, and finally over. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six unders and six overs. Take the third strand and again start your sequence under the second strand that we used. So this one, again starting under, then continue over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, 
over, under and over on the left side. Again, we have six unders to work with. Now, pick up the last of the strands and this one is going to travel first under the third strand that we used then continue over under over under over under over under like this then under and over as you saw I checked that I have six unders, so under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, and over. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This is very important since you need a nice and consistent knot. At this point, we're going to start using the other four strands. Now remember that the strands in our first knot, so this one, finished their sequences with an over one. Take the closest out of the other set of strands, go under this strand going over one, like this. Basically what we're going to do is follow this strand on the left. So just follow it to the right side. So it goes over, under, then over, under, and so on. So this is one strand completed for now. Simply find the next strand traveling over one when it's finishing its sequence. Travel under it with your other strand. And follow the strand on the left all the way to the right side. I don't think this is particularly hard, but because the strands are a bit messy on the left side, you need to pay attention. So this is two strands done. We have two more to do. We have worked out all four remaining strands to the right side of the knot. Now each strand doubles up one of the strands in our previous set of four strands. They all exit over one and to finish up the knot we're going to bring them all back to the left side. 
since they exit over, they're going to re-enter with an over as well to get a herringbone pattern. We're going to start over 2, which also splits a pair of parallel strands. So over 2, then under 2, which again splits a pair of parallel strands. So over 2, under 2. Over 2, under 2, always splitting pairs. And you basically exit on the left side with an over 1. Then you pick up the next strand. It doesn't matter where you start. And again do a sequence of over 2, under 2 and so on. And if you did it correctly, you're again going to exit the same way, so with an over 1. Like this. At this point we need to finish up the ends. For this, what I'm going to do is tuck them back under the knot, come out on the right side, then after tightening I'm going to trim the ends here. First off, let's do the four strands out of the second set. So the four strands that we just used. Remember that we exit with an over 1 here on the left side. Take your lacing needle if you have one. Attach your cord onto it. Go past this strand, so one out of the second set. Past it, then under and out on the right side. Like this. Take another cord out of the second set. Make sure that it exits over one on the left side. Attach your lacing needle. And do the same thing. Past this strand. Then immediately under the knot to the right side. And the next one exits over one. Go past this strand, then under the knot, all the way to the right side. And the last one again exits over one. Past this strand, then under the knot to the right side. The other four strands exit the knot with an under tool. 
we're going to attach a lacing needle onto one, go past this strand which is coming out of the splice, then under the knot and out on the right side. Take the next strand, which again exits under two, go past the next strand coming out of the splice, under the knot and out on the right side. And the next one comes out under two, Go past this strand, coming out of the splice, under the knot, out on the right side. And the final strand, past the strand coming out of the splice, under the knot and to the right side. And with this our knot is finished up. Now tighten it up. You start right at the strand which is coming out out of the splice. like this, then into one of the working hands. Like this. Then continue going through all of your strands, adjusting the knot, tightening it up, and then finally trimming the ends. And you should have a nice looking covering knot. After tightening up the herringbone covering knot, I recommend rolling it with a plank. So you take a piece of wood, you place the knot under it, press down and roll it. This is going to give you a flatter and more consistent look. Optionally, you can add a decorative herringbone knot here at the start of the leash. Take four strands, each about three feet long. Attach a lacing needle onto one of the strands and run it like this. Both strands of this cord should be of the same length. The second strand is going to be added at a 90 degree angle. So something like this. Again, all strands should be of the same length. After working in these two strands of this color, I'm going to add in two more of a different color. I'm going to want to place them in between the existing strands. Like this.
and like this. Basically, the strands alternate, so we have one color, second color, one color, second color, and so on. And all strands are of the same length. We're going to start tying by grabbing four strands of the same color. Line them up without the strands crossing and wrap them around your braid two times. So once, twice. So we have eight strands through which we can weave our working hands. We're going to start with the first strand, traveling under over, under over, under over. under and over on the left side. Take the second strand, start your sequence under the first strand that we used, then over, under over, under over, under over. Take the third strand, pass under the second strand, which we just used, then over under, over under, over, under, and over. And the final strand, under the third strand, then over, under, over, under, over, under, and finally over on the left side. So much like the larger knot that we tied, but in a bit more of a compact form. Take one of the strands of the other color, pass under one of the working ends, and follow the strand on the left. Like this. Take another strand. Let's say this one. Pass under this working hand, then follow the strand on the left. Like this. Then another strand passes under, then follows the strand on its left.
like this. And the very last of the strands passes under the working end. Then follows the strand on the left side. Like this. Now from right to left, we're going to take one of the strands, re enter over to, then under to, like this, then continue the same sequence. So splitting pairs of strands until you reach the left side. Like this. We finish off with an under one. Take the next strand, again over to under to, over to under to, and so on. Again finishing under one. The next strand over to under two, and continue the same way. And the final strand, again, we start over to under to, all the way to the left side. Like this. Now all we need to do is bring all of our working hands under the knot and to the right side. Now just like in the previous knot there are a ton of options for doing this. I'm going to take the easy one, taking one of the strands, Passing past this strand of the same color, which is coming out, out of the braid, then under the knot, and to the right side. And the next strand, I'm going to go past this strand and under the knot. And the next one. Past this strand coming out of the braid 
and under the knot. And the last one. Under the knot. And the final set of strands. Again. Past this strand, coming out of the braid, and under the knot. The next one. Past this strand. Under the knot. Again, past the strand, under the knot. And the last one. Past the strand coming out of the braid, under the knot, and to the right side. After tightening this second herringbone knot, again roll it. Then what we're going to do is trim the ends off of this knot this knot, then tuck them back under the knot a little bit just to hide them out of sight. With this the leash is complete. So guys, at this point we came to the end of the video. I hope that it wasn't terribly hard and that you were able to make your own leash. With this said, thank you very much for joining me and I hope to see you next time.